Okay, so we are recording now. Again, hi, my name is Tara Perrin. I am one of the instructional designers here at MTSU Online. I know some of you, I'm glad to see you. Um, and nice to meet you for the ones I haven't met before. With me today is Dr. Karen Hine. She is a fabulous co-host who will be manning the chat. Um, so if you have questions as we go through the presentation, please feel free to put them in the chat. And Karen is a champ about hosting that. Um, Scott is also here with us. He's our kind of silent partner in the background. Um, Dr. Godwin is not here today. She is cruising in Alaska with her family. So we hope she is having a fantastic time. So this presentation today is about H5, please, or H5, please, H5P. Um, and it is a very basic introduction to H5P. So if this is, if you're looking for how to use a specific tool or building things, this is not the workshop for you. So I wanna be really clear about that. This really is about an introduction to H5P um, and thinking about ways that you can incorporate it. If you didn't scan the URL, I encourage you to do so. If you scan that URL, it takes you to our online teaching resources page and there's all kinds of information on that page and so we just thought it would be a great way to use an H5P activity um, but also then share that information with you so if you ever need it you know where it's at. So maybe There we go. So here are our goals, right? I'm an instructional designer. We're going to have measurable outcomes. Uh, so this is what we're covering today. We're going to introduce H5P technology. Again, it really is an introduction. Um, I am going to do some show and tell, but it is an introduction. So I just like to be clear about that. Um, create an H5P account. We hope that you will create an H5P account. And Karen has something that she should be putting in the chat that's a um, instructions on how to do that. It's very, very simple. And those instructions have screenshots. So um, I encourage you to go ahead and create an H5P account um, during this uh, introduction. We're going to explore the reasons why this technology follows online promising practices and helps to improve the quality of your online course. And then we're briefly going to demonstrate some of those H5P capabilities in D2L and give you some practical examples for using it. So let's talk about what it is first. We kind of need to know what it is. So in technical terms, it's HTML5, and I was going to try really hard to remember what HTML stands for, and I forgot. So Karen, can you jump in? Because I know you know, or Scott, either one of you. It's our good friend hypertext markup language. Thank you. I would have not remembered that. Uh, I remembered the language part. So that's the technical terms. That doesn't mean anything really to me. I'm not a technologist. So in regular people terms, it's that interactive content creation tool that can be fully integrated into D2L or Pressbooks. I do want to make a side note about Pressbooks. I'm not going to emphasize or talk about Pressbooks today. I'm really going to focus on D2L. But if you want to know more about Pressbooks, which are really awesome, please let us know when they send out the um, evaluation at the end in the comments if you want to know more about Pressbooks. Dr. Godwin has actually published um, and co-authored a couple of Pressbooks already. And so she is your go-to person about that. So I just want to let you know it is fully integratable into Pressbooks. So again, what does that really mean? And what that really means is you can easily create content embedded in D2L that follows the science of learning and engagement. And I really, really focus on easily because I'm not a technologist. I am an instructional designer, which means I need to know a little bit about lots of technology, but I don't necessarily need to know how the technology all works with the exception of maybe our LMS. Um, and when I started in H5P, um, I really just started actually, there's a free H5P account that I found out about through a workshop. Um, and I started playing around in it. And that's how I became familiar with what H5P is. And I just thought, I don't understand why we don't have this on campus. And it turned out we actually did have it on campus in a very limited capacity. And again, I thought, well, that's crazy. We need to let faculty know about this because it's easy. I think after the last couple of years, especially, we are mentally exhausted with learning new things. Yes, we're lifelong learners. We love to learn. I get it. But after the last few years, we really are mentally exhausted. Our students are exhausted. The faculty are exhausted. We had to learn so much in such a short amount of time, particularly when it comes to technology. So I really wanted to emphasize how easy this technology is to create things. 
Doesn't mean there aren't some content tools that are a little more complicated than others, um, but you can create a lot of things pretty easily. So let's talk about why it's worth using. And there's really four primary reasons from our perspective. The first, of course, is that it increases engagement. We strive at MTSU Online, and if any of you have worked with us, you know we strive very hard to create instructional materials with faculty members that are engaging and follow universal design for learning principles, meaning um, there's different representation, there's different um, formats. So for example, we might recommend to you videos that are captioned or podcasts that have transcripts or readings, maybe articles or websites to get that variety of materials. Um, this is another way to increase that variety of materials and increase engagement because of all the particular tools there are. And I'm going to talk about the, the tools that exist in just a minute. Um, but it really increase, increases engagement and interactivity because instead of just viewing something or instead of just reading something, the student can literally interact with some of these tools, maybe if it's a crossword puzzle or if it's a type in the word. Um, they can also do things like watch a video and then have summary statements to answer at the end so you know that they watch the video all the way through or you can insert questions into the video extremely easily um, compared to Panopto. Um, no offense, Carlos, but it's a lot easier from my perspective to create interactive videos at H5P. All of these things increase engagement, and we want to do our best to increase engagement because the more engagement there is, the more students learn, more often they are motivated to do things, and they are more successful. So increasing engagement is a really big deal, so that's number one. Number two is FERPA security. We know we're supposed to stay FERPA secure. Um, and by embedding these activities directly in D2L, you are keeping everything FERPA secure because they're embedded directly in D2L and you're keeping them in the LMS. To the best of our ability, we want students to stay within the LMS because of that single sign-on. So this is a great way to add activities to your class that you know are FERPA secure. The next couple of reasons, it integrates with the gradebook, which I know is very important to faculty, and it is accessible. So talking about integrating with the gradebook, most of the activities that I'm going to show you um, or that you'll see do integrate with the gradebook, not all of them, but most of them. And it's very easy to integrate with the gradebook. It's a single click of a button. Um, but I'm going to encourage you to really think about these as activities that aren't graded or that are participation type activities or attendance type activities, whatever you call those activities where you want to make sure they do a group of things. And as long as they do that group of things, they earn the points. Um, students are graded a lot. We judge them constantly. So giving, giving them an opportunity to engage in something without judgment from the faculty member or even a peer um, oftentimes is motivating, even though I know there is a running theme that if something is not graded, students won't do it. Um, I would push back up against that. I am not saying that there are some students that will always feel that way, just like some students will always cheat. There will always be some students who are like, well, I'm not doing that because it's not for a grade. But the activities themselves are motivating enough and they're a little more interesting because they do get to interact with them that I think you would be surprised the level that students are willing to engage just because it's more fun, it's a little more entertaining, and it's a different way to learn. However, if you do think that something has to be graded, consider, like I said, a participation or an attendance or a study session, include it like a study session and create activities towards that purpose where you create maybe seven or eight activities throughout the course of the um, semester and then have students say, okay, you have to engage with five of them. And as long as you engage with five of them, you'll pass this particular section of the course. So that allows them to choose, which follows UDL, but then it also allows them to have that little bit of breathing room so they just don't feel like they're being judged constantly. The next thing I want to talk about is accessibility. We know how important accessibility is, and I think on this campus, faculty take it pretty seriously. But accessibility can be difficult, meaning how do you know when something is accessible? And as a faculty member, there are a lot of rules and there are a lot of things that you could do, but it does take a lot of time. 
So what's really great about these particular activities is you don't have to worry about their accessibility because they're made accessible by H5P. The only things that you have to do as a faculty member are any of the things that we would ask you to do as a faculty member to begin with, meaning if you have a video, make sure it's captioned. If you have an audio, make sure there's a transcript. And if you're using images of any sort, make sure it has alt text. That is something that we would recommend in any online class as a basis of or a basic accessibility standard to meet. And so those are the only things that you have to do in H5P to make things accessible. Um, so that's a really, really cool feature of this because there are a lot of fun activities that frankly, I would never know how to make accessible and H5P has already done that for you. Are there any questions up to this point? I know I can talk fast and I don't mean to. All right, so let's talk for a minute about the H5P system. Hopefully some of you have created an account and H5P is a file folder based system. So when you set up your information within H5P, it's just like any other file folder system like you know you would do with Word or PowerPoint Excel. Might look a little different, but it truly is file folder based. We recommend, you don't have to, but we recommend when you're creating that file folder, that first file folder, you include your last name in it and then put any courses that you create H5P activities for within that folder so that well, first off, it'll be really easy for you if you ever need to search for it, not that you should, but just in case, you just never know. But then also too, if you have specific questions that you need help from one of the H5P admins like Scott or myself, we would easily be able to find what, you, what you're talking about and we'd be able to find that quickly for you. So really think about that when you're setting up your H5P is what kind of organization that you want that will work best for you. So now we're gonna look, as this comes up, these are all the types of content that you can create in H5P. And I know it's probably small, it is full screen on my screen. Um, and when we started doing this, the first intro that I did last fall about this time, we had about 30, 32 um, activities available to us. And in the last year, H5P has gone up to about 50. Um, so these are all the different things you can make. There's branching scenarios, there's an accordion, you can do a virtual tour, you can do a timeline, you can do image hotspots, fill in the blanks, drag and drop tasks. There's so many things that you can do and so many of them are easy to create. Like I said, I'm not gonna pretend that maybe an AR scavenger hunt, which is in beta testing, is probably going to be a little more complicated to do than like a true false question, right? So clearly there's going to be some things that are a little bit more difficult than others, but please don't let that hinder you from saying, I think this might be cool and I could use it in this way. I just don't know how to do it. That's why we're here. We're here to help you with those things. So if you do think, man, it might be pretty cool to do an AR scavenger, but I, I don't know exactly what I'm doing, we'll help you through it. Um, so all of these things that you can create are very exciting. Of the list, I've probably created myself about 25 or 30 of them on the list. So I haven't done everything. I haven't done a virtual tour yet, although we're talking about that. Um, I haven't done an image juxtaposition. I don't work a lot with images. <laughs> um, but, but again, there are just so many things that you can create that help make your class engaging, that help make your class have more activity for students to engage with so that they can learn not just through that reading or through that viewing, but really kind of have that opportunity to increase their skills through these activities. So I am gonna show you some things and let's hope that this works, the show and tell portion. Um, so I'm going to show you, as you can see on the screen, we're gonna look at accordion, dialogue cards, drag, drag and drop images, drag and drop text. And then there are H5P templates in the D2L example. I chose these particular ones to show you because they are quite popular um, with the faculty that I have worked with. There are others that are also popular, but these are pretty popular. So I thought, let's start here so you can see some of the things that can be done whenever you're creating H5P. So if we look at the accordion, which hopefully is going to come up in just a second. Maybe. Can you see it? Is it there? All right. So 
this is what an accordion is. I mean, it's it's essentially an accordion and you can use it for lots of different purposes. I got permission from this particular faculty member to do this. So on the accordion, he had a lot of discussion guidelines, right? And typically you would want to include those in the discussion forum and attach your topic so the students can see within the course itself exactly how they're supposed to engage with the discussion board. This particular faculty member, because it was a communications class, had a lot of things that he wanted to include in his instructions and it made the discussion forum really long and it just looked not great. So I suggested an accordion for this and put it together and showed him and he really loved it so he's using it in his class. So as you can see, it started with the purpose. He wanted students to know the purpose of the discussion boards so they didn't quite feel like they were busy work. And um, we want to try to do everything we can to get students to get away from that word, especially when it comes to discussions. So this was his purpose. His posting requirements, which were a lot, which is why, oops, I'm sorry, which is why I didn't want to include them all in the forum because these are his posting requirements. You know, as you can see about spreading out over several days, you got to make some minimum posts, et cetera, et cetera. Here's how I want you to respond. Then under writing quality, again, communications class, he had a lot of information as well as examples. And so this was what he had for his excuse me, writing quality for his discussion boards, and then punctuality, making sure you you do everything on time. So this was how he used an accordion in his class to present this information. There are other ways or other things that you can do with accordions if you're thinking about steps in a process, if you're thinking about um, maybe steps to an assignment or along those something along those lines those would be great ways to include accordions within your detail of course because you're presenting a lot of information for example in an art course there were a lot of steps as a digital art course there are a lot of steps in order to create that particular process so for that process we used accordions in that class um, so that is accordions does anybody have any questions about that or any questions thus far? Tara, Tara um, this is Gloria. Yes. So hi when Gloria. We, hi there. So I have not set up the H5P yet, but when we set it up, will it be clear once we select which one of these things we wanna use, does it walk us through the steps on how to set it up? I see how it, it works, does. but you set it up. Will it be easy for us to set these different things up? Yes, ma'am. That's okay. one of the things I love about this technology. It's easy. And the things that I'm showing you, I think, are some of the easiest things to create aside from quiz things. But we're going to talk about that in just a minute. Um, these are some of the easiest things. In addition to many faculty having used them, they're some of the easiest things to set up. So I think that's really important. And I will say H5P does have really great short video demonstrations on how to do things. They're usually about two to three minutes most of the time tops. Um, and so they're pretty straightforward to art. We hope my goal, if I ever have the time, is to create micro lessons for our faculty for each of the content types. Um, that is a goal that hopefully I will reach at some point sometime <laughs> because I really want to. But okay. thanks for your question, Gloria. Mm -hmm. Any other questions at this point before we go to the next one? Tara, this is Mike. Can you hear me? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I can hear everybody. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Um, yeah. I know sometimes my headphones make me sound like a robot. So um, do you think that using the accordion tool in H5P is easier or more effective than using the one from D2L, like their sort of document template? I do, yes. I'm not a big fan of D2L's document templates. I'm just not. Okay. <laughs> um, I th I do like these better. I'm actually, in a little bit, we're going to see D2L examples, so actually examples in the course. Um, but I, I actually think these are better. That's just, okay. Scott, do you have an opinion on that? Because you've been around with the LMS a long time, too. Okay. I'm gonna, I, definitely oh, think H, I definitely think H5P is easier. Uh, D2L has more hiccups, especially for new users. H5P, H5P is pretty intuitive. Okay, thank you both. Yeah. Any other questions at this point before I show the next one? I answered Carlos' uh, 
question about whether it supports images and um, some more advanced uh, HTML kinds of things. And it's it's a pretty basic. Um, oh, yes. Accordions version. are basic. Accordions are text. Now, okay. with other things I'm going to show you and other content, there's it's very dynamic. But accordions really are. Here's your accordion. Here's your text information. Straightforward. That's it. No images. Thank you for asking that, Carlos. Any other questions at this point? All right, so then next we're gonna show dialogue cards and hopefully you can see these. Um, dialogue cards are things that you can put all types of content on. That sounded not educational whatsoever. Um, <laughs> dialogue cards are very useful for all types of content. That sounds more educational. So for this one, um, for example, for a language learning course, you could consider dialogues for new vocabulary. And hopefully you can hear this. I'm not sure. So you can actually include an audio. What does cuckoo mean in English? And you could play it. It's not comply. Anyway, I promise you it's there. Um, that's my own fault for having new headphones and not setting things up correctly. My apologies. But it says cuckoo. And if you turn it, it's a K or a casual hello. So that's one dialogue card. For this dialogue card for a chemistry course, picture of water, consider formulas or compounds. What's the formula for water? Turn it over. H2O. This one for an art course, think about recalling um, creators or titles. So who is the painter of the screen? Does anybody know? It's Edvard Munch. I'm going to know that forever now since I've said it so many times. Um, and then lastly, for a music course, again, you can't hear it. Consider including an audio file to practice ear training. So actually, this is the type of scale. It's playing a scale on my computer, not in my headset. Um, and if you turn it over, it's whole home. So those are a couple of ways that you could use dialogue cards. Dialogue cards are great because they are dynamic. It is one of the things that cannot be tied to the gradebook, just like the accordion. It's not meant to be graded. It is meant for students to have practice. Um, but I do love them because you can, as Carlos said, make them so dynamic um, as far as adding those images and those um, audios and things like that. How is that different from the flashcards? The flashcards you can grade. That's the oh. only difference. Okay. Yeah, flashcards are gradable. Dialogue cards aren't. They set up the exact same way. Gotcha. So now for, <clears throat> excuse me, for drag and drop images, um, I've made a lot of attempts. <laughs> uh, this actually, I appreciate, came from a nursing class. Let me make this whole screen. Um, it's from a nursing class, and they're trying to learn about pulmonary medications and what you use for asthma and what you use for COPD. So you literally, she took pictures of the medications. We're just going to drag and drop some. I don't know what the answers are. I should by now, because again, I've made so many attempts. So you would sort them and the student would hit submit and I got four out of eight. And as you can see, the ones that I got incorrect are in red and the ones that I got correct are in green. Um, I think this is a great activity for all different kinds of things, um, especially if you need students, need students to be able to group items or put uh, put, uh, put items into very specific groups. Um, I know this has been great, as I said, for nursing because they can use these images to help. I wanted to tell you where it says this 10 attempts. Um, that is because it's been played with so many times. That's why it says 10 attempts, <laughs> um, just to let you know. But that is what it is like for drag and drop images. It's a little bit harder to do than say the dialogue cards or accordion, but it's not hard, I promise you. Any questions about that? Okay, okay just to kind of uh, make sure that everybody's understanding that anything that you create in H5P is accessible via a mobile device. And so individuals who have, um, who are working with the class in a mobile environment are able to drag and drop. It's just a, it's a touch screen experience works just as well, correct? Yes, yes, it does. Thank you for bringing that up, Karen. Are there any other questions out there before I go to drag and, drag and drop text, which is going to be very similar? I have a question. 
Yes. Uh, when you say compatible with mobile device, how far back is it compatible? That I'm not sure about. Scott, would you know? Or have I, any idea? I do not know, but I can actually look it up. Okay. Well, that's awesome. Uh, so while he's looking that up and getting back to you, I will go ahead and show you the drag and drop text. Clearly, it's pretty much the same as the images, except you drag and drop the words into the containers. So like not Furbosafe, Furbosafe. So we know Facebook, Flipgrid, Snapchat, not Furbosafe. And I'm going to say all the detail options are Furbosafe and check it. Oops. Just as an FYI, in case you might know, the detail blog is not purpose safe. Um, and so that's something else students can do. Maybe you're having them practice. Maybe it's a grammar class and you want them to be able to distinguish between adverbs and adjectives. I mean, it just kind of depends really on what your class is and what you're doing in the ways in which you might be able to use some of these activities in your class. Any questions about that? All right, so then this H5P templates section is for you all. Everything that I'm showing you plus some um, is in this file that I've made public at the institution. So some of the things about uh, H5P that are really great is you don't have to create something from scratch every single time. You can clone things and put them in your folder. So if you decide that you want to create a type in the word, even though we're not talking about that, type in the word, you could search for H5 Please 2022 and it's gonna pop up because it's published to the entire university. You can clone it and then save it within your own file. And now you already have a fill in the word template to go by, you don't have to start from scratch. Um, and that's the case for all of these that you see in here. And we are continually adding more. So I will continue to add more to this grouping so that you do not have to start from scratch. You also can reuse things. There is a reuse button on many of these um, content types. So you can clone and you can reuse. Um, this right here where it says publish, I think it's important to note. Um, if it'll let me show you what this means. Here we go. When it comes to publishing content, you have unpublished, which means nobody sees it. Published, you can insert it in an LMS or public, meaning everybody can search for it, they can use it, and they can insert it, insert it into an LMS. So if you do not want your information to be public, but you want to be able for students to use it, you want to use protected. And then that way you can insert it into the LMS um, the links or the information into the LMS and students have direct access to them without it being made public. Tara. Yes. I just tried to click on the, I guess I should direct this to Karen. Karen, I just tried to click on that link and I got a message that it is not public and I can't access it. Uh, I was going to share that message in chat, but I don't see where you can put something in chat. Um, oh, yeah, maybe you can. So this is the message that I am getting when I click on that link, because I was about to ask, how do we access it? So I'm getting a, a message that I can't access it, that it's not public. And, and it's have, you logged me, in, have you logged into H5P? Um, no. So we have okay. to be logged in? Yes. Yes because oh. I made it only public to our institution. So it has to recognize that you're part of the institution. I didn't make it public to the world. But, but we, so we can't log in just from our MTSU EDU account. It has to specifically be, we have to be on, yeah, I just answered well, my question, trying to log in with my MTSU email. <laughs> It well, and once set you set up your in. account first, yeah. Yeah, once okay. you set up your account, it is single sign-on so that you won't have to keep signing on over and over and over because then it'll know that through single sign-on that you're connected once you've created that account. And again, you should have access to all of these things uh, within the organization once it recognizes you're a member of the organization. But if you have further troubles, let me know, Glory. You know you can give me a call. So now I kind of want, okay, so now that you've seen a few ex examples of content, 
Let's look at it in D2L. And this is my messy play around shell, so please forgive me. So as I mentioned before, you can actually put these anywhere there is a dialog box within D2L. So anywhere there's one of these boxes that has this information, you go to insert stuff. And at the very bottom, it says H5P. And this is where you'd be able to put input information. Now, I have lots of information. I'm one of the admins, so I can see everything. Um, but that's where your content would be. And you would have an insert. There would be an insert button, and you'd be able to insert your information. So you can do that in any dialog box. So, and here's that reuse button I mentioned earlier if you want to reuse something. So again, I did not. Um, did not include anything extra other than what you see with the dialog box that was created for this class. It's the same one, but this is what it looks like in a description box. And I just put it in a description box because I wanted you to be aware that it really can go anywhere within the class if there's a dialog box. Um, so that was what that is what the H5P looks like in a class. It will not say edit to the student. It will always say edit to whoever owns the content. So even if I did student view, you're still going to see the word edit because that's the way H5P rolls. Um, here are the dialogue cards. I put them on a web page. And as you can see, they're directly in the class. And this is where students would engage with them. I also put the image um, drag and drop in a web page as well. So again, this you can see where there's activities. And I wanted to show you this too, this little reports button. So I'm all about giving students the freedom to make mistakes and not judging them all the time. However, I am also for student accountability. So kind of how do you balance those things? So if you choose not to have a great item for a particular activity, which I'm going to champion, you still can see what students are doing and how they're doing if you click the reports button. Now, that's only for options that could be graded. So like, for example, it, there's my name. It said I made one attempt on this day, even though clearly I've made several over time. Um, my first score was a five, my last score was a five, and my best score was a five. So you would still be able to see who's attempting things, how many times they're attempting it, their first score, their last score, and their best score. Even if you decide that you're not going to have that item be graded, you would know what the students are doing. And I think that's really important because we do want to make sure that we have student accountability. Um, and that's a good way to do it without having to have that punitive assessment tied to it for everything that we do. And then the next one and last one, is I put it in a Dropbox. Now, I'm not saying you would put this particular activity in a Dropbox, but I wanted to show you that something could be embedded directly in a Dropbox, again, because it's an HTML box. So a, an assignment Dropbox, um, like I showed you the descriptions, web pages, discussions, you could include these things. If you wanted to have a discussion with an image talking about, say, different monuments maybe you could create an image that ha uh, has hot spots of the different monuments to provide information and then have a jumping off point of, dis of a discussion about that um, there's so many things that you can do it would take way more than an hour to to show them to you but i wanted you to see them in d2l so you can get a little bit of the experience of what students see as well and where it's the fact that you could put information in all kinds of places so I just want to Any, double check with you again, Tara, just anywhere you've got that text editor box. So whether it's like you're just saying, whether it's that description for a module, whether it's a Dropbox, whether it's a discussion board, anywhere where you've got the box, where you've got the insert stuff button, you should be yep. able to find H5P. And that's even how you would yes. set up your account. Um, the yes. very first time it'll <laughs> ask you to log in. But the next time after that, then you should get to whatever you've got content wise um, somebody I, uh, somebody else was asking about um, a direct access to h5p um, Scott are yes. we okay to share that MTSU um, link to get if you didn't want to start out with d2l So 
Scott's put Thanks. that in chat. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> awesome. And and I have it because I use it on a regular basis. I actually have my H5P bookmarked in my toolbar um, login because it is single sign on. So now when I click on it, it just literally takes me to my content. Um, and I do recommend, yes, you may create your account in D2L and it's really simple to do it that way because it all connects. However, once you start creating content, I do recommend using directly the h5p.com only because it's going to be easier for you to create, edit, and see. You can do all those things in D2L. You can create, you can edit all of those things, but it, it's much more difficult. Um, so I recommend doing everything within the h5p.com domain and then embedding it within D2L. Any other questions? All right, so that kind of wraps up the presentation portion of our workshop. Here are some resources for you that um, we made sure the links still work about why H5P is great, how it helps to create um, engagement in your courses. And we, of course, will be um, putting out this uh, um, presentation, this PowerPoint presentation. We'll send the slides so that you have them. And that's all I got. Uh, we appreciate you attending. We are now open to tons of questions. I really hope that you will tell us what you think real quick. If you go to go.h5p.com on your phone or on your computer, either one, and type in that gain code, it should, fingers crossed, <laughs> work. Um, if you just give us a one word, hey, and it's anonymous, so if you thought it was terrible, that's okay. I can take it. Um, but let us know what you think. And I Hopefully, again, it'll work. I don't know if Karen or Scott has done it yet. Um, we'll see. But um, yeah, that's what I have. What kind of questions do y'all have for me or for Karen or Scott? What can we, how can we help? I'm trying to figure out how to set up H5P without having set up H5P. Like, <laughs> If you can't, if you don't have the shell to go into content, and then every time you, I click on this link you just gave us, uh, that Scott gave us, is asking me to log in. I can't log in if I don't have one. Do you have an old course, like a really old course? Maybe you don't have a dev shell, but you have an old course. Well, yeah, I've got, you know, I've got current. I've got a current. I wouldn't current use, cur don't use, a cur yeah, I know you got a, cur don't use current course. If you've got an old course, go into that one and then create your H5P account from there. Okay. Cause like for the online one I'm working on, I don't have a shell yet. And so, right. okay, I'll just go to something from last fall. Right. It's just something old. Okay. Um, and That's then that way they should fix. That's a merry-go-round. <laughs> <laughs> can't log in if you don't have a login and it wants your login. All right, I'll try that. Thanks. Okay. What other questions might we have? Tara, this is Lane again. Um, if you want to, so I'm thinking about in a dialogue box where sometimes I might have text and then I think I told you before I've inserted like a poll everywhere word cloud and then there might be more text. So you've got that HTML5 element in the middle of a bunch of text. Will the H5P work in exactly that same way? It I, should. Does that make any sense? Yes, it does make <laughs> okay. sense. It should. Yes, okay. um, I hopefully y'all can see the word cloud um, that maybe some of you are adding to. Um, so you can see what, I mean, cause that is a word cloud that you could put directly in. Maybe you put that in a discussion. You ask them a question, have a one word answer, the word cloud's created, then they talk about what, what the answers are in the word cloud. Um, but yes, Lane, it should work like okay. that. Thank you. H5P is very dynamic. So um, it's really great in that way. I, I love H5P if you couldn't tell. <laughs> and just to kind of follow up on Lane's question, it's kind of like um, inserting or embedding a video, you know, how you can put words around above and below the box where that video would be embedded um, when you're in those uh, text editors. So you should have all that freedom and it should give you that freedom to, you know, put text around it to surround it, even if it's an accordion, um, you know, it'll still expand um, and contract without messing up the formatting. 
and you can still edit like the width and height in the um, HTML editor. Like you could go in and change it to 100% width instead of whatever the default that H5P is going to insert for you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions? If there are no other questions at the time, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and stop. There we go. I'm going to stop sharing. I'm also going to stop recording.